Are you here to kill me, assassin? <clears throat> I'd be a fool to think I could. I could kill you now, slicing your throat or plunging my blade deep into your heart. Take my heart. It belongs to you anyway. Aww. Do you always have to have a line at the ready? Hello everyone, it is the Almighty Jeff and this is episode 1 of Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. So we are of course in game number 2 of our Chronicles run through. If this is your first introduction to my channel, welcome. I am a completionist less player. We will be playing through this game on the normal difficulty on our first, uh, just the first playthrough. We will be getting stealth gold in all 10 chapters in this game. And as well, which was introduced to this game, we will be completing all of the challenge rooms, which I may do at the end of this episode, depending on how long it takes me to get through this first memory. Um, so yeah, of course, if you wish to see me play through Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, which we have recently finished, uh, you'll be able to find the playlist about, basically. Um, so let's have a look in our database before we start. So we've got our new protagonist, Abbas Mir. Abbas Mir was a Kashmiri member of the Indian Brotherhood of Assassins during the 19th century. Abbas Mir was born in the beginning of the 19th century, though his exact date and place of birth are unknown due to the conquest of Kashmir by Maharaja Ranjit Singh in 1819. During this event, Abbas lost his family and became a thief kid. There he met Hamid, the master assassin who took him under protection and eventually emerged as his mentor. Years later, Abbas, an assassin in his own right, started working with Hamid, which led to the theft of the Kawai Noor diamond from the Maharaja himself. During this mission, Abbas faced Templar agents planning to assassinate Ranjit Singh and was unable to stop them before they did, but he did manage to reclaim the diamond and to make acquaintance with Princess Payarakawa. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that. And there's just the general um, how-to for the game. You can read them if you want to, but uh, it's nothing too important. Right. Uh, let's start with memory sequence number one, The Assassin's Heart, 1841, Amritsar Summer Palace. Abbas Mir's journey begins with infiltrating the Amitra Summer Palace. So I have played through this game once before, I think it was just shortly after it came out. I remember enjoying it a bit more than uh, China, but again it was a long time ago so I don't know if my opinion will have changed. Um, I'm Amritsar, India, 1841. Abbas Mir stole the Kuai Noor diamond from the Maharaja's palace under the Templar's noses. Abbas's mentor, Hamid, thinks the diamond is a powerful piece of Eden, but Abbas is more interested in the beauty, beautiful Princess Piera. Her grandmother, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, was killed by the Templar agent Francis Cotton, and the, free, the region is in turmoil. British troops are strengthening their influence in the region under the command of Templar agents infiltrated within the East Indian Company. Events recently worsened with the passing of Ranjit Sung and successor Karag. The court is preparing to crown his other son, Dulip, Dulip Singh, when Abbas decides to take the risk of sneaking into the Amritsar Summer Palace. So this is... Two, this is 29... No, it's not 29. Wait, wait, wait. 27 years before the events of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Security's tight today. Someone must have noticed my visits. I don't need weapons to knock out a few guards, but better not give them a reason to shoot me. I believe another there it is. Now connection. It. Unarmed and in areas I shouldn't be, full of palace guards. This is going to be fun. Another connection to Assassin's Creed Syndicate, other than it being the game that was released after Syndicate, is that this character, um, is Abbas Mir, is the father of Henry Green. Um, I can't remember what his actual name is off the top of my head. Um, but that's his um, anglif anglified, is that the word? When sort of the name is more adjusted so that it's easy for English people to say. Uh, okay. On the edges of the Amritsar Summer Palace stands Abbas Mir, skilled and deadly assassin. This mission is different though. There are no Templars to deal with. Only innocent guards who, under the assassin's mantra, cannot be harmed. Abbas must rely on all of his training and skills to gain entry to the palace and move through its grounds without being detected. Deep within the palace walls lies Abbas's goal, Princess Pyrocow's personal chambers. Nice. Okay, so usual order of business. So we'll begin the first two upgrades, increased health and carry bodies faster, but we'll not begin the plus game mode. Um, 
rewards in this playthrough we'll just be going through the one time but we'll be getting our secondary objective which is to pickpocket and loot the jewel three of the jewels from the thieves okay Amritsar. Situated in the northwestern part of India, the Punjabi state, Amritsar was, is the spiritual center of the Sikh community. The city owes its name to the sacred lake constructed in 1574 by Ram Das, the fourth ranked guru in Sikhism. In 1588, his successor, Guru Arashan, ordered the construction of a sacred palace at the same location where Guru Nanak, the very first guru, would go to meditate. The Harmandir Sahib, commonly known as the Golden Temple, was completed in 1604. Guru Arjan had the manuscripts of his commandments installed there. His writings today are the basis of the Sikh faith, which considers this book as the words of its last living guru. In 1801, Rajit Singh was Maharaj of Punjab, subsequently creating the Sikh Empire. During his reign, Amritsar became the region's capital. Okay, so, let's see, we've got one Sikh point, nine shards, and two chests. Cool stuff. Yes, okay, so this is basically a basic tutorial. Obviously, for me, it's pretty simple because I'm the, there's very little that is different between this game and... Uh, oh, okay, well, that's new. Okay, um, between this game and uh, Chronicles China. So, okay, we've got Seat Guard. So look, a basic melee enemy armed with a blade, while it's not deadly when encountered individually, they can present a real danger when in great numbers. Oh, uh, okay. Just go back. Manuel. Okay, saddle climbing. Right. Okay, open the street gate to the palace. We could do that. We Tigers, okay. Guards use tigers to instantly raise the alarm when they detect nearby intruders. If you enter the awareness of a tiger, they will instantly raise the alert of all nearby guards. You'll need to find a way around the tiger's awareness range if you want to avoid raising the alarm. Tigers will raise the alarm if they're affected by the noise bomb or chakram. Okay, documents. Bengal tigers. The Bengal tiger is quite common, but highly symbolic animal in India. They are very powerful and dangerous, weighing up to 325 kilograms and more than 3 meters long. They usually feed on ungulates, rarely on smaller prey, and supposedly also on other predators, if needed. Only wounded or starved tigers may attack men to feed, but they generally don't wander out of the territory. Man-eating tigers are rare enough so that a few of them recorded history become legendary and starred in famous novels and haunting tales. Interesting. Okay, so that's, those are basically like the, um, this should be easy. the dogs of this game. Hmm. Okay. Looking good. <laughs> Alright. Right, we do have subtitles on, don't we? Uh, okay, 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 Indian elephants. The Indian elephant is one of the three subspecies of the Asian elephants. They are smaller than African elephants and have smaller ears. They were used as war elephants in the region of Punjab in antiquity. There were around a hundred of them at the historic battle of the Hides. Hidaspes River, were out under the Great Fort King Porus during his conquest of the East. Okay, we've seen these, of course. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, we do have subtitles. Good, good, just double checking. Ooh. Okay. Hmm, Seek Rifle Guard. A basic ranged enemy that is armed with an accurate but slow firing Jizel rifle. The length of his weapon helps keep his foes at bay and he cannot be rolled over. Well, I don't want to really. Okay, Jizel. Jizels were simple, cheap muzzle loading rifles commonly used in Indian Middle East. Often handmade, they were more personal than most firearms, which is why they were very well crafted and decorated. As they were designed for war, they had long barrels and used long, large calibers, but some Afghan fighters were known to fight even nails and pebbles. Fire even nails and pebbles. With rough bullets, they were more powerful and accurate. British troops took lots of damage from these weapons during the Anglo-Afghan Wars. References to this weapon are not to be found in some of Rudyard Kipling's famous works, including The Man Who Would Be King. Interesting. I realise, um, obviously I'm doing a lot of reading if and I'm sorry if that's not really interesting to you guys it's just how I roll oh okay there's nothing down there hey shadow gold okay don't want to get times too far oh every time you achieve a gold rating oh well 
I was reading that. Uh, so it looks like... Okay, so I can't read it. The way you play through a section of a level is assessed and rewarded. These are called style grades. There are nine style grades within the, within the game, each one being a reflection of how you play it. The nine styles are divided into three categories, Shadow, Silencer, and Assassin, and each one has a gold, silver, and bronze grade. These star grades are scored with Shadow Gold offering the maximum score and assessing bronze the lowest. Oh, that's changed from the last one. The score you achieve in level will determine the upgrades you can earn. To achieve the higher value grades, you must try to remain unseen and take down or kill no one except designated targets. Any enemies within the game that are designated as ones you have to take down or assassinate will appear golden when using Eagle Vision. Taking down or killing these individuals will not affect your star grade. Each time you achieve gold rating in the star grade, you will increase your score multiplier up to a maximum of 5. If you achieve either a silver or bronze rating, you will lose your multiplier. Your current multiplier is shown next to the score in the bottom right corner of the screen. The more you are seen, the more you kill, the lower the style grade you, are, you will receive. There is a style grade bonus available if you achieve gold in the majority of the sections within a level. Okay, so we're basically going to be doing that anyway. Um, then we've got to have things down there. Okay. Um, hmm. Right, so let's have a going up here. Right, so yeah, that's um, new from last time. You didn't actually have multipliers, it just... Uh, you just got whatever you got. Okay, so... Got a sync pie, just make sure we're not missing anything. I don't see how we really could have done, but anyway. Uh, so we've got our first chest coming up pretty soon. Okay. Oh, going underneath the elephant. Don't mind me. Oh. Wait. i get this first. Oh, okay, so it wants us to go down that way. Alright, no problem. Let's have a look at the chest. Scroll number one. Abbas Mir was born in Kashmir in northwestern India during the early 19th century. His home region was conquered by Maharaja Ranjit Singh of the Sikh Empire in 1819, into the death of numerous Muslims in Kashmir, including some of Abbas's kin. This caused Abbas to grow up hating Singh, considering him a cold blooded killer. The orphan boy survived among other refugees in Ankhas and fractured country. So he didn't like him, but you tried to save him from the Templars? I'm, I'm confused as to uh, what's going on there. Maybe it was more of his uh, a responsibility to rescue him, but it wasn't actually a passionate kind of thing. If you get, if you get what I'm going for there, I'm not too sure. All right. Ooh. Oh, I was gonna try and work with my uh, my rolling skill there, but it was not to be. Hmm. Right. Looks like we've got to uh, go up that way. Whip. Okay. Huh? You're so now, I think. Alright. Let's put time three. Amit Shah's Summer Palace. A beautiful attraction of Punjab, the Summer Palace of Maharaj Rajit Singh is a famous building located in Amitsra. Located in the heart of the Golden Garden known as the Rambag, the Summer Palace is a masterpiece of Indian architecture. Its entrance, called Dashani Deori, is not worthy thanks to its distinct design with water tanks feeding fountains in the palace's garden. The palace itself contains numerous mirror and glassworks as well as paintings and art pieces. Nowadays the palace is a museum hosting historical oil paintings, coins, miniatures and instruments depicting the country's Sikh era. Fascinating. Okay. Alright, let's have a look at uh, what we're doing here. So we've got a little bit of a gap before the next uh, fragmento. Yep, we've got a dash ability pack again. A little, uh, little sneaky there. We love to see it. Nice. Okay, okay. Alright, big audience, I have no quarrel with you. Whew, that was close. Okay, cool. So it was actually not, not as big as a gap as they, uh, as they thought it was going to be. Oh, whoop. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of uh, crossover between China. Although we get some of our abilities earlier as well, which is also cool. 
Alright, uh, just worry about where this guy's gonna go. There we go. Sorted. Nothing to worry about. The enforcement zone. Oh no. I hate those zones. Oh, this one in the game, guys. All right. Don't turn around. You bastard! What did I just say? Okay, hopefully we're good. Yeah, Buzz. Let's go. Alright, let's have a look. What are we doing here? There's a chest down below somehow. Okay. Um, anything else updated? Manual. <laughs> Manual. Manuel. Okay. Uh, we got left actually. Uh, two fragments, one chest. Okay, you can take down guards without having to kill them if you remain on scene. Perhaps a quiet, non-lethal takedown would make my life easier. Okay, so... Okay, obviously this is an exception, I believe, um... Oh, well. What bombs? Um, because I believe that, that must be what the silencer thing is. Because uh, obviously it said, didn't it? So I think that replaces the brawler, which was in. Um, Chronicles China. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I just reminded me. Uh, of the secondary objective. Was that on the guy that we just looted? Oh. I'm confused. Hmm. Crap. Not what I was after. Right, okay. Right, uh, follow. Don't come too close. Stop right there. That'll do. Right. Okay. I get you, game. I get you. Hmm. Uh, a bit closer than I'd have liked. So I want to go down this way, I believe. No, I don't actually. Hmm. Okay. I thought I needed needed him to go to the left of me so I could get past him, but seems it's not the case. That's okay. Oh, is he flaws? Oh, bloody hell, we got a lot of things there, didn't we? Okay. Documents. Orchid trees. The orchid tree, or Bernian purpurea, is a small tree growing in, growing in Eastern Asia and not to be in Punjab. It can reach six to seven meters. It produces purple flowers that look like orchids. Okay. So we've got another target this way. And that'll be him. So if he doesn't look through the window. I mean, he could if he wants to, I suppose. Yeah, I always 
jumped in to, to loot him, then I was thinking, no, it's uh, probably a bad idea. Alright, sleeping guards. Uh, oh, no, don't know who you play. God forbid. I was like, hey, you can't do anything anymore because we've uh, we've deactivated it all. Sleeping guards will wake up if you make noise close to them. Walk by and do not use noise bombs, smoke them or whistle near them. Okay, it could be risky. Yeah, bloody hell. Alright, we were real stealthy down this way. Hmm. Increased health. Oh, you actually get it in the mission. Interesting. Right, I, I, I'm confused as to how we actually get... Ah, oh, okay, never mind. I'm used to this game like shortcutting me at places and I'd be like, oh what if I get down there then at the level I'm like, ah, I was supposed to get it ages ago, which is why I'm so paranoid about missing things. As a boy, Arbaz had to survive in terrible conditions under the reign of the Sikhs and became a survivor and a thief. He was a gifted climber and a smart charming boy, which helped him stay alive and fed during the years of hardship. Despite these qualities, Arbaz found himself one day in enough trouble to acquire the help of another to survive. Hamid, already a master assassin, saved him and became his friend. The mentor was charmed by the kid, as anyone would have, and took it upon himself to train him in the ways of the assassins to teach him the creed. Okay, so just the two more fragments, and then... Uh, well, and the, um, the one more jewel as well. Um, which are all down this way. I need supplies. These guards should have plenty. Oh, okay. Pickpockets. Our bus can go there. Yeah, we already know that. Got it. Got it. Oh, can't leave that guy. Never mind. Key. Looks possible. Got it. Right. Um. Hmm. Okay. Madam. Oh. I I just saw how we're actually supposed to do that. Never mind. Got it. I was like, it's just like, oh, I'm crap, I'm alerted. Like, how am I actually supposed to get past this bit then? <laughs> and they're just like, oh, okay. Seek elite guard. More aware of his surroundings than his fellow guards, these elite guards will maybe approach with caution to avoid alerting them. Must be approached. Okay. Alright, we could do a little sneaker really down this way. Okay. We can do that. Seems simple enough. Spoke too goddamn soon, didn't I? Right. Um. Oh, this is actually the the uh, last bit pocket guy. Could you buy, uh, just quickly check the map then? Got it. Cool. Arbaz's memories, part one. As I moved through the summer palace, I noticed some of these guards were decorating lavish jewellery. I could only guess at how they obtained the decoration and thought maybe my purse was a little light. The thrill of stealing from, Mahara, from the Maharaja's guard was too great for me to resist. Punjabi jewellery. Punjabis love ornaments and wear them often at weddings and other traditional gatherings. Men are not excluded. They wear canthas, which are tightly worn necklaces, not mostly without any pendant. 
The Tawiz is a rectangular shaped amulet, amulet timed around the arm with jewelry and belishes, and the Zanjiri is a piece of jewelry which comes with a set of chains. Okay. Uh, oh, so I've got a. Alright. I as it gets it. I get it, I do. Right, come on, Abaz. Um, okay. Just double checking the game, it's not going to screw me over there. Won't be the first time. Uh, I can't wait, apparently. Shame. Look at you. Okie dokie. The points are really stacking up in, uh, in this one, I like it. Okay. Okay, do we actually have to take him down though? It looks like we, we could have done, but I guess we don't actually need to. I'm not going to. No need to uh, risk things unnecessarily. Alright, and this is it. Have we done did it? Carry buddies faster. Well, that's a nice perk. Are we going to see the fair princess? Looks like it. Are you here to kill me, assassin? I'd be a fool to think I could. I could kill you now. Slicing your throat, or plunging my blade deep into your heart. Take my heart. It belongs to you anyway. Aww. Do you always have to have a line at the ready? Ah, uh, you. Give me SE2 vibes. You know, when he's like sneaking in to see uh, Christina. God damn. Maximum score 5. Brego? Oh, is that with the, um... No, hang on. How did... Wait, so is this maximum score level available? 5,110. We got 4,630. And it's... Um... Okay. I'm going to go ahead and assume... Because, I mean, it requires 7,500 for... Plus game mode, so that would imply... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. I don't think we could have done that any better anyway. Increased health. Carry buddies faster. Combat dash. Okay, probably really going to see that. Chakram. Yes, that's just replacements of the, of the flying... Throwing knife, sorry. Spell bombs. Jump kill. And slide kill. Alright. Backing out the... Uh, see if our data is updated again. Just it'll probably just be the new things we picked up there. Yeah, that's odd. Oh, that's very strange. Um, good stats. Yeah. Hmm. Confusing. All right, let's do some of these challenges. We'll see um, if we can do it anyway. Uh, okay. Do we need another? Hmm, okay. Let's do this uh, level 1 collect then. Okay, collect level 1. Proceed to continue. It's all animal shouts as fast as possible exit through the door. Time to beat 50 seconds. No, so even avoid yellow zones.
That was tough. That was tough. Yeah, to the record, yay. Okay, um, so we need another fragment. So I assume that's part of the actual main story that we need to unlock that. Okay, so let's do a level one of contracts. Why not? See what we're doing in this one. Okay. Find this destination contract, locate your target using Eagle Vision, eliminate the target next to the door. Level complete, time trial, avoid vision cones, mandatory jump kill. Okay. Well, that took a lot of bloody trial and error. <laughs> but I got there in the end. Holy hell. I could do level 2. We ain't doing level 2. That ain't happening. <laughs> okay, but we'll do our first one for assassinations. Do level 1 for them all. Maybe do level 2 next time. Okay, assassination level 1. Okay, assassinate all enemies in the challenge room. Okay, kill style slide plus jump plus from hiding place. Exactly halfway done with all the challenges. That wasn't too bad. Still pretty tricky, but um, 
Not impossible. Okay, we've done level one of all the challenge dreams. Phew. Okay. Alright, that is going to end it for today. So, the actual mission itself was pretty easy. And was the uh, sort of guiding you in slowly. And it's, it's sort of expecting you to not have played Crankle's channel, though there are actually quite a few differences that I didn't remember. So it's quite interesting, it's not just an exact continuation of the same sort of gameplay, it is the same sort of gameplay, but they have different spins on it, which is pretty interesting. Chilling Dreams are a pain in the ass, but we have done half of them already, um, and hopefully we'll have enough fragments, we will have enough fragments after doing the second memory, to unlock the second set of them, and then once those are out of the way, we don't have to worry about them again. Like I said, they were tricky, but um, that second one in particular was uh, really difficult, although they did set up checkpoints after you got the contract, after you killed the contract, and um, so um, if you feel like you've got enough time to do the rest of them, then it's a good thing to do, but as well, it will save how long it took you to get to that point. So you could very well still end up being screwed and not having enough time, even if you nailed it, to kill the target and get to the door in time. So you basically got to do it pretty uh, pretty good. But um, yeah, like I said, we got there in the end, so it's not too big a deal. So next time we will be going through the second memory sequence in the game out of 10, and also doing the second lot of Challenge Rooms 2, if we have enough time anyway. Before I put them in, take a second to thank my amazing patrons. My £5 patron is Ron Highway. You can find links to his channel as well as my other £3 patrons in the description down below. And also, you secret to my £1 patrons. Thank you so much, everyone. It is truly appreciated, and it goes a long way to help the channel, so I do thank you a lot for that. And if you should become a patron, you can follow the link in the description down below. But you don't have to do that because at the end of the day, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.